By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have more Brawl old school magic for you. So this is a top 16 match played in the Timmy's Brawl Fest, an old school magic Brawl tournament consisting out of 46 players. So out of the 46 players, this is the top 16, the 16 best decks. So I'm really, really excited to show you the games here. And uh, today we're gonna look at Matt, who's playing an Angus McKenzie deck, and he is taking on Daniel, who's playing with Lady Evangela. And the cool thing is both of these cards, both of these commanders are commanders that I don't own personally. So first off, I'm kind of jealous, guys. Uh, but also they're quite interesting because they can both do something in combat and they can kind of... Uh, let, let maybe first focus on Angus. Angus is uh, white, blue and green that you can tap and you can say creatures attack and block is normal, but none deal any damage during combat. So it's great for like a pillow fort deck. And then you've got Lady and Lady basically does the same but only for one creature. So uh, one uh, black and one white and tap target creature does no damage during combat this turn. So you can kind of see the control strategy coming from both of these players. And um, that is just going to be an interesting matchup, right? That promises to be very interesting. Now, before I show you the decks, because I've got deck photos of both of these decks, beautiful decks, if I say so myself. But before I jump into that, maybe you're wondering, what is Brawl actually? Well, Brawl is... EDH, but then with 60 cards, one of those cards is your commander, the other 59 cards are in your deck. You can only play with one copy of each card with the exception of basic lands. Now, if you'd like to know more about the ins and outs of this format, please check the description below, because there you will find more information and a link to the tournament website where you can find deck photos of all of the decks, well, almost all of the decks that competed in Timmy's Brawl Fest. Um, before we continue now with the deck of Matt, so the Angus McKenzie build, I would just like to point out that in the description you can also find timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the action because I know that some of you like to skip the deck deck or watch the deck deck after the video. So it's it's all up to you. You can use the timestamps in the description below. Okay, and um, I've said what I wanted to say in the introduction, so that means we're ready for the deck decks. Let's start with the deck of Matt. Let's go take a look at Angus McKenzie. And here we see the Angus McKenzie deck built by Matt. And uh, wow, this is when I'm looking at this, I know what he wants to do, right? I'm sure you see the same thing. He is going for control. This deck reads control all over it. He's going to take his time. He's going to play big fat creatures like Sarah Angel, Air Elemental, Mahamoti Jin, Triskelion, Tetravitz, those stuff. And then in, in that process, he's probably going to steal some stuff. Yeah? We see steal artifact. We see control magic. But we also see uh, Rubinia Soul Singer. So that's quite an interesting one. Rubinia Soul Singer is a card. Let me just look it up here. It's uh, one blue, one white, and one green. You can tap it to gain control of target creature for as long as you control Rubinia, and Rubinia remains tapped. So it's a way to steal a creature. It's basically a better version of Preacher, right? And Preacher we also see in this deck. Preacher, of course, a creature from the dark. You can tap it, and then your opponent has to give you one of his creatures. Now, the thing is with both of these cards, they are two for ones because you're taking a card away from your opponent and you're getting, or a creature I should say, and you're getting their creature on your side. So, and you're having a creature added to your army and you're taking one away from your opponent. And that is what makes these cards so strong. Also control magic and also steel artifact, right? They're all two for ones. So they're extremely strong. And I feel like in this format, they're stronger. Why? because you're playing singleton. So you don't have four swords or four disenchants that you have to play against. No, you have one swords, one disenchant. And yes, of course your opponent is gonna have other answers, but maybe they're gonna be just a little bit more clunky. Maybe he's just not gonna find them. And I mean, that is what makes it so strong. And if we look at the rest of the deck, I mean, this deck is fully powered. This is a powerhouse. You can also see that, you know, Matt didn't really care much for green, just playing the single regrowth. And of course, the Rubinia Soul Singer, that's all the green that's in these 59 cards. His commander, of course, having the green color identity, but he's not even playing with a Sylvan Library. Interestingly enough here, he's also not playing with a Counterspell. Instead, he's playing with a Power Sync, which I kind of understand. Power Sync is very powerful because it taps all the lands down of your opponent. So even, even if you're not able to counter it, that effect can be a reason to play 
your power sink, you know, that effect alone. Um, I would just like to point out one really neat little combo in this deck, and that is that between Taunus' Coffin, Tetravis, and Triskelion. Now, Taunus' Coffin is a card from the Antiquities. It is beautiful art. It's really cool. Go read the Brothers of War so you know who Taunus is. He's a great artificer. But what Taunus' Coffin can do, you can tap it, and you can target a creature, right? That creature is exiled. It goes into the coffin. Then during your upkeep, you can choose to untap the coffin, and the creature comes back on the battlefield. And what happens when he enters the battlefield, the ETB trigger happens again. So Taunus is, uh, so Triskelion, for example, when it comes onto the battlefield, it gains three plus one plus one counters. So if it comes out of the coffin, you get three additional plus one plus one counters because it goes in the coffin with all the counters on it. So if it's a four, four, it comes out of there as a seven, seven. And those are six plus one plus one counters. That's just insane. You can start pinging, dealing damage, create mayhem. It's gonna be crazy. The same thing can be done for the Tetravis, the 4-4 Flyer. Comes out of the coffin as a 7-7 Flyer. A little downside is they do get tapped out of the coffin. The nice thing is about the coffin, you can also use it, of course, against the creatures of your opponent. So it's another way to kind of take control of your opponent's, uh, opponent's battlefield. And there's just a lot in this deck. This is looking like a really, 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 really heavy deck. And I think it's going to be tough for his opponent. Actually, let's take a look at the cards of Daniel and see what he can do against all this, like all this power. Let's take a look at the Lady Evangela deck. And here we see the deck by Daniel. So the Lady Evangela as the commander, one black, one blue, one white. It has, you know, I guess a comparable um, uh, ability as Angus McKenzie, but it just doesn't work for the whole board. It only targets one single creature. So it reads... Uh, pay a white and a black and tap and prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by target creature this turn. So what it can do, for example, if you've got, you know, if his Sarah Angel is being blocked by Matt's Sarah Angel, he can use the lady and say, all the damage dealt to my Sarah Angel is prevented, but your Sarah Angel still dies because that damage just goes as normal. So that's kind of a way. It, it's a pretty good card. It's a one-two uh, body. And also the color combination is quite strong. And when we're looking at his deck, uh, we kind of also see the power, just like uh, Matt. So in that regard, it is a fair fight. Both players playing Black Lotus, playing the Mox, and Ambl playing the blue power. So that's always nice to see. But of course, instead of that green color, he's got the black color. So in that regard, his deck should actually be slightly better. Because we saw in the deck of Matt that he hardly took advantage of that color green, only a regrowth. But here we see a completely different story, right? Daniel went more on the black side most of everything than with the other color. So if we're looking at black, a card that I think is going to be really strong here is Ashes to Ashes. It's two black and one to cast. It's from the dark. It deals five damage to you. So, so far it's not great. But now comes the good part. Uh, sorcery speed, by the way. It removes two creatures from the game, right? The nice thing in this format, the commander format, is that you will um, have a lot of scenarios where your opponent will have his commander out. So Angus McKenzie in this case and another creature, because one of the problems with Ashes to Ashes is try to have two targets on the board. I think with this format, with Brawl or EDH, that's not really a problem, and that's what's making this card better. Of course, a downside of the card in this case is that double black in the casting cost. Talk, talking about you know a double color in the casting cost, we see that a lot, of course, with black, and I think that's one of the reasons why Daniel chose to kind of go into black and invest in that color, because we see Hypnotic Spectre, Royal Assassin, also two black. I think Royal, by the way, Another really strong card in this format, also because Angus McKenzie has to be tapped to use its ability. The same thing goes for Preacher, for Rubinia Soul Singer. So if he has that Royal, and if he can protect the Royal somehow, then he can start killing a lot of creatures on the side of um, of Matt. And the nice thing is both players are not playing with Burn, so that means that when a player, when a, 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 a creature enters the battlefield and isn't countered, it's harder to get rid of it, right? Because there are no earthquake effects, there are no fireballs. So that kind of makes it makes it more difficult. We do see a little bit of direct damage though in the form of um, Psionic Blast here in the deck of Daniel. By the way, what a beautiful, mostly black border deck, Daniel, beautiful collection here. He's also playing with a moat, moat and enchantment from Legends, two white and two to cast. And it basically means that you cannot be attacked by any non-flying creatures, right? It's a moat, a moat behind you, you're protected. Um, I really like this card because it's so simple. It's one of those self-explanatory cards. I do think in this match, it's not gonna be really useful because Matt is mainly playing with flyers. Uh, but still, maybe, you know, if Matt steals one of the creatures 
of although they have mostly flying so yeah i think mode's not going to do much looking looking at the the matchup here but still it's of course a really strong card probably is going to help him a lot or has helped him a lot already in the other matchups the interesting thing here is when i'm looking at daniel's deck and i'm looking at matt's deck both decks are going for the long game we don't see any cheap creatures in these decks we see a lot of card draw and of course we also see the mind twist here playing with black and the demonic tutor so that mind twist is discard uh, both players playing with the Tome. Both players are playing with Mahamoti Jin, with Sarah Angel. I love the beautiful black board of Vesuvian Double Ganger, by the way, Daniel. I can't wait to see that hit the board. Um, but yeah, very strong decks. And earlier I was saying, I think Matt's the favorite. But after looking at your deck, Daniel, I really think this is 50-50. I think we're up for a great, great game. You know what? Let's go to the games and check it out. Who's going to win this, Matt or Daniel? Let me know in the comments below and uh, let's start. Let's go to game one. Game number one. Here we go. So Matt is sitting on the left with Angus McKenzie and Daniel is sitting on the right with the lady. And they're rolling the dice to see who gets to start. I guess that was a nine for Matt. So he gets to start here winning the dice roll. Let's see what he can do. Playing an island in a past turn. There is an underground sea, Mox Jet, pass turn. There is a planes. So both players starting slowly. Now he can cast his commander. There is Lady Evangela. The cool thing is about commanders, if you're not used to seeing this, they're in their command zone and you can cast them anytime from your, well, not anytime, just as you can cast a normal creature. So during your main phase, you can cast your commander. When your commander gets killed, you can choose to put it back into your command zone. There we see Angus McKenzie coming on the side of Matt. And then there's placed a counter on top of it. And that means that the next time that you want to cast it, it's going to take two more. Oh, control magic on the Angus McKenzie. Sorry, this is kind of brilliant. And very unfortunate for Matt. What I wanted to say is there's then a counter being placed on the, on the commander. And every time you want to play it out, you have to pay a tax of two more mana. And Matt is already in trouble here playing a GM Day Tome. He has got to try to draw himself into a disenchant here. Or maybe steal the Angus back. That could be a possibility, of course. There we see a Felber Stone tapping four. There's a Dancing Scimitar. I'm expecting him to attack here. Attacking for three. Remem remember, Angus has a power of two. So that means Matt's dropping to 16. There's still time, of course, for Matt. Uh, it's not all over yet, but it is kind of annoying. There we see him tap five. Okay, there's a Rubinia Soul Singer. So he can use the Soul Singer to get his own commander back here. That is quite interesting. He can also choose to use the Soul Singer, of course, to get the Dancing Scimitar and use it as a blocker. That could be another option. There we see a Mana Vault from Daniel. It's already an interesting game here. Tapping a lot of mana. I believe that's six. Okay, there's a Brain Geyser. So that would mean he draws four cards. Wow, this is really good for Daniel here. Playing a Black Lotus. Is he going to sack the Lotus for something? Okay, so he's going to attack first. Dealing three more damage. Should we see Matt drop to 13? And now Matt can use the Lady. Rubinia Soul Singer, I mean to take control of his own commander. And yeah, that's exactly what he's gonna do. So Angus McKenzie is getting back, but it's tapped of course, because Daniel attacked with it. And now he's untapping everything. He can at least deal two more damage, playing a Sand Silos, a card from Fallen Empire Storage Land. Ooh, that goes Divine Offering on the Jam Day Tome. And of course he's drawing one more card. That also means four life for Daniel here, gonna go up to 24. Two more damage for Matt's going to drop to 11. But next turn, of course, Matt can start using his Angus McKenzie if he wants to, to kind of prevent all damage that is being dealt. So let's see what Matt can do. Matt playing a strip mine here. Not really a good target for it right now. So he's just going to use it for mana. There's a Thomas's coffin. Okay, now slowly it's starting to look better. For Matt here. And there is a strip mine on his strip mine by Daniel, by the way. Daniel playing a basic swamp. He's gonna attack. And ooh, there we see the, the coffin activation. So he's gonna put the dancing scimitar in the coffin. 
And now he's going to untap. And as you can see, the uh, Dancing Scimitar comes back on the battlefield tapped. So it's kind of a neat trick. If you've got enough mana left over, you can always activate that coffin in instant speed. It's really good card. What can he do? Is he going to attack maybe with Angus McKenzie? Choosing to pay six. Are we going to see Mahamoti Jin here? There's a trike, maybe even better. So trike, a 1-1 creature, but comes into play with three plus one plus one counters and works really... Okay, there's a power sink. This is important because trike and Tansis Coffin, like I said in the deck deck, that's a golden scenario. Then Matt can start piling up those counters on the trike and start killing everything in sight. And that's not what Daniel wants to see, of course. Untap the mana vault, by the way. And this is still everybody's game. He's going to attack one point of damage in. Matt doesn't have the mana open to use. Or his Angus or his Tannis' Coffin. Ooh, Ancestral Recall. That is a pretty big deal. Those three cards can potentially give Matt the win here. There is an Ivory Tower. Of course, I'm talking a little bit before my turn because Daniel is still pretty high up in life. He's on 22, so it's not going to give him the win. But it is going to give him an advantage in this game. And we saw Daniel kind of starting off really well, but now Matt is, is doing his control thing. He's kind of taking over the scene. And it's up for Daniel to maybe find that Ashes to Ashes that I talked about. He's attacking right now with both creatures. Quite interesting. We've seen Angus McKenzie activation. So that means no damage is being dealt at all. And then we see a balance. Okay, so that is why he attacked. He was, of course, hoping for Matt to maybe block the lady. But Matt probably saw through that, and now he's got to discard quite a lot. This is a good balance, by the way, because it's played just after that Ancestral Recall of Matt. So in this case, the balance is really like an, um, a discard spell. And one of the cards that Matt's losing here is Control Magic, and that's, of course, a really, really good card. He could have used that to take control of Lady Evangela, or maybe... Oh, is he getting Control Magic back? Okay, no, he's getting Ancestral Recall back, of course, going for that card advantage. So that one green card is really helping Matt here, playing another island and passing turn. I'm still waiting on Mahamoti Jins and Vesuvan Doublegangers to appear. There we see, oh, Time Twister, Mana Drain, Counterspell. Oh, this is going so fast. I love this, guys. It's fantastic. Again, good timing by Daniel because he's like, okay, you just played your Ancestral Recall, got a lot of cards. You know what? Time Twister, buddy. Time Twister, buddy. And he protected it with the counter spell, and that's usually what good players do. So even though Matt also had his mana drain ready, Daniel could back it up with the counter spell. Really, really good magic. And now, of course, Daniel still has a lot of mana over, and there's some jewelry hitting the board. What is he going to do now? He's got a full hand of cards. Tapping five. Ooh, tapping quite a lot. And there is a mind twist. That is dirty. And Matt doesn't have a counter spell. Look at that hand. Losing Time Walk. A great card in his deck. Does this mean that Daniel's going to take this disenchant on Thomas's coffin, I think, or not? I think I would go for the coffin. I'm not quite sure now. And... Okay, so he's going to use the Angus McKenzie... To make sure he doesn't take any damage. And the Tons' coffin is gone, I assume, to the disenchant. It seems that there's some discussion about how to use the triggers. Okay, he's taking something back. I'm not quite sure what's... Okay, they're kind of going through the motion, I guess. Okay. And now we have that scenario. So he's putting... He's putting the scimitar in the coffin. And okay, there we see a counter spell. There's just so much happening here. That Nevenerals disc, I feel like Matt really needed to push that through. Didn't work. Although, I mean, he still has the Soul Singer. He still has the Angus McKenzie. It's not over. His biggest problem now, of course, is cards. Daniel's still having some cards in hand. We can't see his hand, unfortunately. Um, but I know for sure that Matt's out of cards after that mind twist. That was really nasty. So we see 22 life for Daniel, got a Dancing Scimitar and a Lady Evangela on his side of the board. But we also see Matt, who's got a Rubinia Soul Singer and an Angus McKenzie. Remember that Rubinia Soul Singer remains tapped because it's got the Angus McKenzie, because Daniel control magic the Angus McKenzie earlier in this matchup. And there's a Swords to Plowshares, probably 
on the Rubinia Soul Singer. That means two life for Matt. So he's going to go to 12, but he's going to lose control of Angus McKenzie. And in response, Matt activated the ability of Angus, making sure he doesn't take any damage, at least for this turn. And now he's stepping a lot of mana. Mahamoti Jin on the battlefield. And that is a great top deck here from Matt. The Mahamoti Jin, it can do a lot. And maybe it's just going to be a pass here for Daniel. Exactly. He's got no answers to the Mahamoti. And I remember Matt cannot really attack with it. Ooh, he's finding his ancestral recall again. Matt is getting back into this game. This game is just going back and forth like absolute crazy. There's a control magic. Is he going to steal back the Angus McKenzie? He's going to steal the lady. And why the lady? Because Daniel doesn't have the mana to activate the Angus McKenzie. Oh, actually, he does because he's got the Felwer Stone. Oh, man. he can With the Felwer Stone, he can make green mana. That is insane. He can use the Angus to protect himself. Wow. What a matchup this is. And there we see a Nevenerals Disc. And the question now is, is it worth uh, for Daniel to use the disc next turn? I'm not quite sure, actually. Attacking Matt. Matt dropping to 11. What a crazy game. There we see a tap of... I fought a 4, but he's taking it back. That Ancestral Recall really got Matt back, back up after that Mind Twist. There we see the untap. There is a Maze of If. So, I mean, Daniel's got more than enough protection. The cool thing about this game, by the way, is Daniel has the commander of Matt. Matt is the commander of, of Daniel. It's kind of insane. And uh, there, there's, there are no tranquilities in this game, by the way. So uh, and, and Daniel already played his Disenchant. So control magics are just really, really difficult to get rid of in this format. There we see another island pass turn. And we see now Matt's life. Is it slowly ticking up to the tower? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, he's on 12 at the moment. Passing turn to Daniel. Playing an Ashes to Ashes. Wow, this is huge. This is huge. And there you see Daniel putting his lady back into the command zone, something I talked about earlier. So that means five damage for Daniel. Going to drop to 17, and then he's going to attack. And this, I mean, this Ashes to Ashes is just big. And there's a time walk taking an extra turn. Bad news for Matt here. Fully under pressure again. Going to take some damage. Going to drop to six. And he's going to gain life from the tower. Going up to eight here. Wow. And this is such a cool game, guys. Really cool game to watch. It's going back and forth like crazy. There we see Matt tapping six. Are we going to see a Brain Geyser? Brain Geyser drawing four cards. These cards can get completely back in the match. Daniel is probably going to strip in response. I think that's a good decision. And of course, Matt's going to say, I'm going to tap and keep it. Uh, going to keep it floating. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is so interesting. So playing an island, using that mana, playing a copy artifact. Okay, so he's going to copy. He's probably going to copy Nevenerals Disc. Exactly. Copying the disc, which is really good for Matt. And kind of bad for Daniel because he's ahead on board here. There we see a Mock Sapphire. He's tapping a lot. What is he doing? Oh, Alabaster Potion. That is so funny. He's using a potion, using the counters on his sand silo. This is the first time I've seen an Alabaster Potion being used on Timmy Talks. Actually, that's not true. It's the second time. But still, you don't see this often. Fantastic. Alabaster Potion, a card from Legends. Two white and X, I believe, and it can prevent or gain life. In this case, Daniel chose to gain life. So he's going up to a lot. He's also attacking Matt again. The problem here is that Matt is still gaining life from the tower. So the two damage he takes, he gets back from the ivory tower. And now I'm expecting, oh, he's not yet using the disc, deciding to pass turn and use the disc probably when Daniel announces attackers or at the end step of Daniel. It's probably better to use it at the end step of Daniel, by the way, just taking the damage and in the end step, use it. Attack here with the dancing scimitar. So we see Matt dropping here to seven. And then we see an activation on the end step of Daniel. And uh, that means that uh, the board is getting wiped clean. Matt's on seven, Daniel's on 38, it seems. 
Oh, he is doing it in combat. Okay, that's interesting. So that gives Daniel the opportunity to recast Lady Evangela in his second main phase. I was expecting Matt to do it on the end step instead so that Daniel wouldn't be able to cast anything. There's a Sol Ring, Mox Pearl Sol Ring, tapping four. There's a Jam Day Tome. That's a great card in this scenario because look at the amount of lands of Matt. Wow, what a fantastic card to play here. Azur Drake, also pretty good. It's going to block that Lady if he wants to attack with it. Let's see, what can Daniel do here? Tapping, s ooh, how much? Are we gonna see another Brain Geyser? <laughs> oh, what a game! I just, that, that's what I love about Time Twister, you know, you just keep seeing the same cards over and over again. It's insane. We've seen Matt casting two Ancestral Recalls and a Brain Geyser. Daniel's cast, I don't even know, but at least Brain Geyser twice. Uh, he's just taking a lot of lands right now and passing turn. And Matt, of course, also drawing cards with his Jam Day Tome. But Daniel has a lot of life and a maze and Lady Evangela. Again, he's counting the amount of, of mana. What does he want to do with all of it? There is a balance. Ooh, the balance is good after that Brain Geyser. Again, using balance as a mind twist. Daniel did it earlier in this game. And it looks like Matt is doing the same thing now to Daniel. Oh man, that's going to be a killer. It's kind of hard to see what he throws away. One of the cards being a Wrath of God. They're both counting their lands to see if they need to get rid of any lands. And two lands are going on the side of Daniel. So this is actually a really good balance for Matt. You know, taking care of all those extra cards in the hand of Daniel, I believe, is crucial here. And he's then recasting Angus McKenzie. So just to, he's, he's got to pay two extra because it was killed earlier. That's why that one counter is on Angus. So that means it's now costing five to cast. And when it gets killed again, he's got to pay seven. And there he goes. Mahamoti Jin. Unfortunately, the Jin is not going to be too powerful with the McKenzie. That we see him drawing a card. Can he find a counter spell here? Mana Drain can stop the Mahamoti. It looks like that's not happening. Using a Demonic Tutor here after. This is huge. What is he going to look up? Maybe a Control Magic to control the Angus McKenzie? He kind of knows that Matt doesn't have a counter spell, or else he would have countered the, um, the Mahamoti Jin. Interestingly enough, he's passing turns, so he's deciding not to go for Control Magic, or is Control Magic in his graveyard again? It's really hard to follow at this point. Remember, because this is Brawl, they only have one copy of each card except for the basic lands. There is a Time Twister again! Oh, man! This is... What an insane game! Every, every time I feel like one of the players is getting the upper hand, there is something like this happening. Again, great timing by Matt because Daniel just casted the Demonic Tutor. So there was a card in his hand that maybe could grant him the victory. Remember, Matt's kind of low on life. So if Daniel can find a way to get his Mahamoti Jin through, you know, then Matt's on a two-turn clock. But if we kind of ignore the life totals, then, you know, this is everybody's game. There we see an Icy Manipulator after cracking the Lotus. And tapping two more. Time Walk. And of course, he can now use the Lotus, or the, the Icy, I mean, to tap something down. More power, why not? Yeah, why not? Ancestral Recall. Okay, there we see a Divine Offering. Mana Drain. Ooh, is Matt, is Matt going to still win this? Interesting, he's choosing to cast a Chaos Orb instead of using the Icy Manipulator. I think I probably would have chosen to go for the Icy. Tap down, perhaps the Maze, although it doesn't really matter that much. And I don't know what else is, of course, is in the hand here of Matt. Remember, he also just casted that... Ancestral Rico, so maybe he just has a lot of cards that he wants to play out. So the interesting thing here is, what is he going to use the Chaos Orb on, or is he going to use it? Okay, so he's going to use the Chaos Orb. He's going to flip Mace is gone. Yeah, because it's probably more difficult to deal with a Mace than to deal with a creature, so I kind of understand that decision. He's also going to tap the Mahamoti Jin. then he's going to attack for two here, so Daniel's going to take two. He's still on just a lot of life, trust me. And there he's going to tap five. There is an air elemental. He's paying uh, that mana, by the way, with the, uh, the mana drain earlier. So there we see the air elemental. And now things are kind of shifting into the direction of Matt. I mean, look at the amount of permanents he's got on board. And 
If you're mad, you're kind of hoping for, for example, a balance. There is an attack and he's being sent back, it seems, or he's changing his mind. There is a Wrath of God. Ooh, man, this is pretty sweet. Wrath of God. So that means Matt's losing all his creatures again, which is a good thing when you're Daniel. And man, this is this is such a this is such an interesting game. There we see a Jam Day Tome used by Matt again, getting that extra card and taking on his turn. So both players are just drawing a billion cards and are also constantly attacking each other's hands, forcing them to discard with mind twists and balances. It's just crazy. I wonder what Matt has in hand still. So using the IC. Okay, so he's tapping down the factory to attack with the factory. So he's going to take get two damage in, which is something. And what else is he going to do here? He's going to recast Angus McKenzie, because why not? He's got enough mana. Look at the amount of lands there. Insane. So Daniel drawing into a scrub land, it seems. And he's going to attack for two. He's going to be sent back, of course. So he's going to untap. You can always try. Sometimes players forget. There's a time walk. Okay, that's why he did it. Untapping again. Remember, Angus McKenzie still has summoning sickness. I wonder if he could have played his Lady Evangela, by the way, if he had enough mana. And then cast a time walk. I'm not sure. Drawing a card here with the Tome. And he's actually going to block on Angus McKenzie. Interesting. I kind of understand this because he's got more than enough lands and he really doesn't want to take any extra damage. Remember, uh, Daniel is playing with the Psionic Blast, so it's up for Matt not to get into uh, into that kind of... In, on four life, I mean, because when he's on four, Daniel can kill him with one Psy Blast. There we see a Triskelion. So that's a 4-4. Four, four. And there's an attack with the Mishra's Factory. So Daniel's slowly ticking down in life. I mean, he's still really high up. It's 18, 28, 32 life still. But it can go really, really fast now. Now he can, you know, attack for six a turn. There we see Daniel kind of tapping a lot again. Again, Are we going to see a big creature? No, he's just going to recast a lady. Remember, Lady Evangela can, uh, can make sure the target creature doesn't take any damage at all but that's not going to be very helpful in this scenario for daniel at least it's a blocker i guess not now but maybe later in the game it could be useful and i'm expecting matt here to attack with the factory exactly and a triskelion so there's a 4-4 and a 2-2 six damage here for daniel so he's going to drop to 26 and there is a pass turn Daniel drawing his card for turn. There's a Jam Day Tome for Daniel. That is a really good card. And of course, Matt's going to draw. Maybe he's going to find a counter spell or something to stop this. He's not finding it. Daniel also drawing an extra card. There we see a Divine Offering. That means four more life for Matt, which is interesting. Matt is bumping his life total up to 11. And it's really starting to look bad. Oh, there we see the amazing, beautiful Vesuvan Double Ganger. In response, Matt is going to... If he kills the lady, by the way, then there's no target left for Daniel. Interesting. I think the way Vesuvan Double Ganger works or not... No, because you have to choose it just like a clone. Okay, so what happens here? Daniel plays the Vesuvan and says, I'm going to pick Triskelion. In response, Matt is going to kill his own Triskelion. And then the target no longer exists. And that means the Vesuvian goes to the graveyard. What I think of how the Vesuvian works, but I could be wrong, is that it works more like a copy artifact where you play the Vesuvian, comes onto the battlefield, and then you choose your target. And if your target is not there, you choose another creature. But I could be wrong. We do see a regrowth here on the Triskelion. So Triskelion coming back as a 4-4 creature. Let me know in the comments below, uh, by the way, if I'm right or wrong. I could definitely be wrong. I've been wrong a lot of times. So there we see Triskelion hitting the board again. And that regrowth is being really useful for Matt. Drawing an extra card again. Tapping down, of course, the Lady. And that means that he can come in for four more points. This game is really intense. There we see a Swords to Plowshares. And uh, he's dealing two damage to Daniel. One damage to the Trike itself. So that means it goes into the Graveyard. And he's not choosing to kill the Lady. Which kind of makes sense. It's probably better to just deal damage at this point there's so many there's so much land in the game right now 
There's an attack for two, I guess. Daniel taking two more damage from the Mishra's factory. He's going down. He's now on 20, it seems. And there is the Tetravus. And Tetravus and Thomas's coffin, they work together really, really well. So he can start making huge flyers. And he's playing the Alabaster Potion again, right? Oh, that's just insane. So he's not even tapping the lands, but I guess he's had to get it so much. Now he's out of cards and top decking a planes. Things are looking bad here for Daniel. There we see the Tonsus Coffin, Tetravis Trick. So the Tetravis comes back, the ETB, so six additional counters. And then he chooses to take the counters off as well. So he's got six 1-1 one -one flyers. They do have summoning sickness, so he cannot attack yet. But I mean, the Tonsus Coffin, Tetravis combination is what's definitely going to kill Daniel, if, if he cannot find a solution. Putting the coffin back in again, drawing an extra card. I mean, Matt's really in the driver's seat right now. Bringing it back. Three more 1-1 one -one flyers here. And I'm expecting an, a big attack here by Matt. He's going to attack for six. Six damage for Daniel. Or is it going to be eight damage also attacking with the factory, it seems? And what else is he going to do? Okay, he's deciding to put the, the Tetravis straight away into the Tonsus Coffin. Interesting decision. And he's going to take his turn. I mean, this is looking really bad for Daniel. Daniel needs one of those big game-changing cards. We already see nine 1-1 one -one flyers, three of them having Summoning Sickness. Or not, or does he have 12 flyers already? Okay, whatever, but he's dealing tons and tons of damage. Look at Daniel's life total. He's back to 20. There's an ivory tower. This is looking really bad for Daniel here. But what a game this first game is. Remember, it's just the first game. You know, we're playing a best of three. Oh, a balance. Oh, ho. Matt, do you have a counter spell or are we going to start? Oh, man. And this is why Tetravis is also a good card by the I mean, um, uh, Thomas' coffin. Because the Tetravis is in the coffin. So it's not being seen by the balance. So even though Matt is, is losing a lot of 1-1 one -one artifact flying creatures here, he can just untap his coffin again and get three new 1-1 one -one flyers next turn already. So they're counting their lands right now. Again, you know, you can see how strong balance is in this game because, again, in this case, case, Matt has to discard his entire hand. It's really going back and forth here. Here we see three new 1-1 one -one flyers for Matt. He can at least attack with the one. Drawing the card for turn. Okay, there's a Pendlehaven, which is pretty good with those 1-1 one -one flyers. So he can now deal three damage in total, animating the factory and attacking. Actually, four damage because of the Pendlehaven. Four damage for Daniel. He's on 15. Things are looking bad for Daniel. Even after that balance. He's going to attack. And he's using the maze, of course. Again, doing that trick with the Tetravis. So he now has four 1-1 one -one flyers. He can deal six, seven damage right now. I'm expecting him to do it. So dealing, yeah, because he's using Pendlehaven, dealing seven damage to Daniel. Daniel dropping to eight. He's gonna die next turn. He's got, he needs a solution. He's gonna tap a lot of mana. What is he gonna do? Brain Geyser? Brain Geyser, oh man. Until the last stand, this game is going to be exciting. He wants to keep a lot of lands open. Oh, Power Sink, a huge Power Sink. There's a power sink on the power sink. Insane, insane. Oh man, this game. This game has everything. I mean, this is this game is a poster boy for uh, for the brawl format. It really, really is old school brawl. And there we see disenchant finally taking care of Thomas's coffin. But now the Tetravis is coming back into play with three plus one plus one counters. I mean, how is Daniel gonna get out of this? Control magic, perhaps? Okay, control magic, but then he's going to control the tap Tetravis. He's still dead. He's still dead. I mean, it's not going to save him. It sounds strange, but yeah, okay. So he says, you know what? You got this one. Uh, what I wanted to say is maybe in this situation, 
uh, uh, he could have considered taking a 1-1 untapped flyer to just chump block, but then still he wouldn't make it. So Daniel, man, you, you, you fought like a tiger and match. So did you, but eventually Matt, you got this first game, but remember, it's just the first game. This is insane. Let's quickly go to game number two and see how this, how this ends or not. Maybe we get a game three. Wouldn't be surprised. Let's go to game two. Game number two, and we're off to the races. Oh, look at Daniel go here. Mox Pearl into Mana Vault. What can he do next turn? Maybe Mahamoti Jin, Sarah Angel. Just a basic land from Matt. There's a Mishra's Factory tapping two. There's a Time Walk. Wow, what a start from Daniel. The question is, can he do something that really hurts Matt at this stage? Looks like he can only animate, deal two damage. That's it. And look at the hand size of Daniel. Only two cards left in hand. There's a Factory by Matt. Can he do something? Not a time work by Matt, just a pass turn. We're going to see what Daniel's going to do next. Tapping a Swamp, attacking for two again. Matt's going to drop to 16. And that's it. So for Daniel, he's really kind of trying to find a powerful creature here. Maybe his Sengir Vampire, for example, to start dealing some damage. And we also see Matt here with that Maze of If. There we see a Moat by Daniel. And I kind of discussed the Moat in the deck deck. I don't think it's really going to matter much. Of course, it's going to stop the Mistress Factory, but Matt is pretty much playing with only flyers in his deck. I guess he's got the Triskelion, but, you know, Triskelion is still good even if you can't attack. And here we see a lot of power, by the way. Look at him go. There's a Mahamoti Jin. <laughs> There's a Power Sink by Daniel. Very important Power Sink. And I understand that Matt had to try because if he could have slipped the Mahamoti Jin through, that might have uh, given him the victory. And there's the pass turn. So after that strong start by Daniel, there's not really a follow-up. Look at this. There's an air elemental. There is a side blast. So the air elemental's gone. And there's a hypnotic specter. It's a good thing for Matt that he's got that maze of if to stop that hypnotic specter. There is a forest. And you know, he could cast his commander, of course. Ooh, he's not going to do that. He's tapping quite a lot. Will we see a Brain, brain Geyser? <laughs> oh, so he's playing Ancestral Recall for three cards. Now he's playing Brain Geyser for three cards. Matt really can complain about the card drawing. But of course, Daniel is also really finding some sweet cards attacking here. Maze Activation, Hippie is sent back. There we see some tapping. And oh, Time Twister. That is, again, really good after that Brain Geyser. I have to say, both of these players really know how to play with those draw seven uh, cards. So the Time Twisters, they got the skills needed. And again, a very explosive and a very fun game to watch. There's just so much happening. And we see Matt counting seven. We see Daniel counting seven. Of course, Daniel is the first one to go. He's still got some mana open. Don't think he played a land yet. Exactly. There's his land for turn, a basic island. Five open. Can he play a big creature? Can he maybe do something with that Maze of If? Of course, he's already attacked this turn, tapping four for a Gem Day Tome. And there's an Accessory Recall. Oh my god. So Daniel's really finding the cards as well. Both of these players, look at that Black Lotus cracking the Lotus. Tapping Mana Vault. Of course, Mahamoti Jin. Why not? These turns are just <laughs> insane. I mean, you know, on both sides of the table, they're slinging their powerful spells. There is a Wrath of God. Great answer by Matt here. Having three blue open now, passing turn. Wow, this is magic for you. Untapping. Also untapping the Mana Vault, by the way. So Daniel is not taking a damage. Has that Jam Day Tome still. Chooses to tap three instead. There is a Royal Assassin. And I do understand that Daniel does this. The most important thing about Royal is, you know, it becomes really useful after the first turn because then it doesn't have summoning sickness anymore. So, you know, Matt wants, or Daniel wants to get him out as soon as he can. And there is a disenchant. Will there be a counter spell here? He's drawing a card first and then it's gone. No counter spell from Matt. At least he got a card out of it. That's something. And things are looking really good for Daniel now. He does have his Gem Day Tome still, and he has a Royal Assassin on the board. Unfortunately for Daniel, Matt also has that Maze of If. And there is a Triskelion. I think this is the end of the Royal. Going to kill the Royal on the spot. 
And there is a divine offering ay, 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 on the book. And look at that. I mean, you know, Matt's completely back into this. He wasn't even far behind, but now he's completely back. Let's see what Daniel can do here. Tapping five. There's a Sarah Angel. It's a good thing, of course, that Matt has that maze of if. And there we see him tapping four. Oh, this is really good. Remember Tonsis Coffin Tetravis in game one. Now we've got Tonsis Coffin Triskelion in game number two. This is going to be problematic really, really fast for Matt. He's got to find a way to get rid of this coffin. Here we see him doing the trick. So the trike comes back. It is tapped though. And he's killing the Sarah Angel. Exactly, it is tapped. So Matt's tapping him now. Remember, when it comes out of the coffin, it comes back tapped. Doesn't really matter in this case because all he needs are the counters to just shoot Daniel down. And uh, look at that. He keeps doing the trick. He's got four counters now. And I wonder if he's going to choose to deal four damage straight away. He's not doing it yet. So he's probably going to put it back into the coffin. Let's see if Daniel can do something. Is he going to play a recall here? What is he going to do? Yeah, there's a recall. Okay, I guess he's going to take back the Ancestral Recall. Disenchant? He really has to get rid of the coffin. And there we see a Mana Drain. Ooh, all the hopes and shatters gone here for Daniel. This is not good. And he's Mana Drain. Look at that. He's got eight mana to spend next turn. This is so bad for Daniel. And there we see Matt uh, dealing some damage with the Triskelion before putting him back in the box. And I mean, this this trike trick is working. Oh, this is brutal. Brain Kaiser for eight. Using the mana that Daniel just spent to cast that recall. This is insane. I mean, I'm sorry, guys, but I think Matt's really going to win this one. We're not going to see game number three here, I think. I mean, it ain't over till it's over, but I mean, it's looking really, really bad here. And Matt's really going for life. They're spirit linking the trike. And uh, passing turn. That's actually quite a cool combo. I haven't seen that before. Spirit Link on a trike. Yeah, and there we see a Sengir Vampire. That Sengir is not going to live long. Or maybe it is, because it looks like uh, Matt doesn't really care about... Ooh, there is a Swords to Plowshares. Okay, okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe Daniel can still come back. I've seen weirder, uh, weirder, weirder things in the game of Magic. Man, that was kind of a tongue twister for me there, that W. Uh, anyway, passing turn here. Matt also took care of the Sengir Vampire. Not really necessary for him to do that, though. There is a disenchant on the moat, and then at least he can swing in for two. Which is some pressure. I mean, Daniel's on 13. And it looks like, uh, you know, Matt wants to uh, put some aggression on. Wants to be the aggressor in this game. Where in game one, Daniel was the aggressor. And look at the life total of Matt. He just gained a lot of life with that Spirit Link trick on the trike. And of course with his, I believe, his Divine Offering earlier in the game. And uh, he's going up in life because of his, his Ivory Tower as well. So this is difficult. And I kind of assume Daniel now keeping his Mitra's Factory on blocking duty. Both uh, players haven't played their Commander yet, which I think is kind of weird especially for Daniel choosing not to play his commander in this second game now there he's gonna attack animating the factor I'm kind of expecting Matt here to have an answer yeah putting it in the coffin of course that's that's also an option I, I kind of forgot the Thomas's coffin there so there we see Daniel's life total gonna drop to nine here gonna play a demonic tutor okay it ain't over till it's over what can he look up here He's already played his Time Twister. Because that would definitely be an option with Matt having such a full hand. Could go for a Mind Twist. The thing is, the Mind Twist doesn't really help him against that Mishra's Factory. He could simply go for a really good creature. He's just passing turn here. It's quite unexpected. Because he's got all his mana still open. There's an attack. He's going to drop to 7. I really wonder what Daniel's going to do next turn. I wonder what card he tutored for. There is a Black Lotus cracking the Lotus. <laughs> Jesus. 
Come on, people. I wanted to know, Daniel, what card you tutored for. Can you please let me know in the comments? Because you had so much mana open. I'm like, why? Why? Or, or I missed something. I mean, I, maybe I missed something. Anyway, both players are going to draw a fresh seven. Oh, this is just insane. What an insane game. But I have to say, it's looking really, really good for Matt. If he can find, like, big creatures, that's what he needs. He needs big, beefy creatures to play out. I mean, a Tetravis would be great with, of course, Donis's Coffin. It looks like he's past turn. So also, Matt just, just to keep all his mana open. Look at the amount of lands he's got, the amount of mana. It's insane. Two black. There's a Demonic Tutor. So he found the Tutor again? That is insane. I wonder what he's going to look up for. Tap. There's a Divine Offering. I assume... Oh! Again, a Mana Drain. I wanted to say I assume on the Taunus's Coffin, but there is that Mana Drain. Absolutely brutal. There is a Sarah Angel. And there is a Time Walk, so it's going to take an extra turn here. So Daniel is finding powerful cards, but he just can't get rid of the Coffin. And I guess after watching... This match, I want to put a Tonus's Coffin in all of my decks. There's a GM Day Tome. Again, very good card draw. I have to say, I really love Time Twister. The fact that you just keep seeing all these cards coming back again, it's just very entertaining. There we see a Disenchant by Matt. So Daniel only got one card from the GM Day Tome. At least it replaced itself, you could say. And there is a flip. Yeah, that's a hit. I'm a little bit surprised that the flip is on the Sarah Angel and not on the Maze of If. I think I would have flipped on a Maze because he could use the Coffin, but of course I don't know what Matt's got in hand. Sarah Angel of his own. Okay, so that's probably why. Attacking here, I'm expecting Daniel using Maze. Still, you know, in, in, in my opinion, I think if he would have flipped on the Maze, he could have put the Sarah Angel in the box and he could have dealt more damage. But I guess Matt is looking at it from another perspective. Look at him go now, tapping more lands. There is a Brain Geyser. This is just insane. I've seen so many Brain Geysers in this match. It's like crazy. Oh, these players are drawing so many cards. It is absolutely powerful magic here. And again, Matt just finding tons of lands, probably. He's got a full hand that Ivory Tower is doing overtime. There is a Spirit Link. Would be really sweet for Matt if he could find... No, he can't. If he could find a time walk because the maze was already tapped. Doesn't have to time walk. Pass his turn to Daniel here. Daniel still has some cards in hand, I assume. Maybe control magic? Control magic! <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Or are we going to see... Okay, he's going to put him in the coffin. There's a terror in response to that. I kind of feel okay yeah that works if he would have played a terror then then matt could have put it in the coffin in response but in this case it works right because it's the way the stack works so the terror is on top so that resolves first so it wasn't a misplay by daniel but because of the coffin daniel had to invest two cards to get rid of the sarah angel which is quite an investment i mean the thing that he needs to do he needs to get a steel artifact and steal that coffin there is an air elemental from matt so still pressure. Is he going to attack? I don't think so. Why would he? And tapping. And there is a Preacher. The thing with Preacher is that at least now Daniel knows that there's a Preacher. So maybe he planned on playing a creature, but he's not doing it. Oh yeah, this is a good card for Daniel. If, the, if, if he can untap this and use this, he's back in the game. He, it, it's that simple. Matt gaining more and more life. He's now on 36. Mm, that's a lot of that's a lot of mana. There's a recall. Can Daniel counter this recall? Disenchant. Mana drain. Pfft, look at that. Chaos Orb. And he's just dumping three lands. This is why recall is such a good card. It's absolutely insane. And Playing Chaos Orb, I mean, disenchanting. Yeah, he's taking away already the disc, disenchanting the disc. And he's going to flip, I guess, on the maze. I would go on the maze because then you can swing in for four with your air elemental. 
That is a hit. Mace is gone. And he's going to swing in here, I assume. Attacking because he's got the Preacher. So if Daniel animates, he can steal it with the Preacher. He get it back. And, you know, it, Daniel, there's just not much you can do. He's going to go to one here. So he's got one more turn. And I, I cannot really think of a way out of this for Daniel. Oh, this is so sweet. Time twister. And now the question is, can it resolve? No cards in hand for Daniel. Yeah, he's got the Mana Drain still. I knew that. Mana Drain, hopes and dreams shattered for the second time by the same Mana Drain, actually. Anyway, what, what, a great, what a great match this was. Absolutely insane. Daniel and Matt, this was not magic. This was a magic show. Thank you very, very, very much. If you're watching this and you still don't like the Brawl format, then nothing will probably, nothing will change your mind. Nothing will change your mind. If you do like it, then make sure to come back uh, next week because I'll be posting another video. Then we're going to dive into the top eight. Two brand new players, two brand new decks. And of course, Matt's still in the running for that title. So I would like to thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, if you want to support the channel, then uh, there are three really simple things that you can do. First of all, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're new to the channel, what well, you can do, because I've got a cool animation, you can subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell. So that's what you can do. If you're already a subscriber, first off, thank you very much, man. Fantastic. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this game. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, I mean, remember, I play this times two, so sometimes Maybe you missed something or I missed something or I explained something wrong. Feel free to leave a comment and ask your questions in the comments below. That's what they're there for. And also by posting a comment, you're actually helping the channel grow. You're telling YouTube, hey man, this is cool content. I'm leaving a comment. So um, yeah, it's just good business. Talking about business, you can also help me financially. So you can help me on Patreon. That's a page where you can become a patron of the channel. And it already starts with $1 a month and all the money that I make with Patreon, of course, goes back into the channel. So if you want to support me, that is the best way to do it. Um, the cool thing is, if you become a Timmy Talks patron, you can also join these events because I organize tournaments. We do some other stuff as well sometimes. Um, anyway, but I do that to kind of thank my channel members and patrons of the channel. So if you want to become a part of that, uh, check out the Patreon page. There's also a Discord where we chat about magic. Um, yeah, so if you want to have access to all that stuff, just join the Timmy Talks Patreon. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll. Let's have a look at all the fantastic, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks.